Good morning, my dear students. Today we will discuss the carving steps for the upper four. First of all, we will take the crown length, which is 8.5 millimeters, and we drag the line for the crown length all over the block. Then we draw a simulation for the root portion by 5 mm below the crown length line and we redraw it all over the block. And then we draw the midline. On the buckle and the lingual aspect. Then we will start to draw the cusp slopes. This tooth is an exceptional one where the longer cusp slope is the medial one and the shorter cusp slope is the distal. So one side will be this will be the medial side, three millimeter cusp slope, and we draw it in the medial half of the block reaching the buccal half and the lingual half. And the distal cusp slope will be 2 mm from the top of the block and draw it in the distal half, buccally and lingually. Don't forget to write the aspects distal and medially so as not to be confused later on. Then we will start to take the measurements for the first dimension which is the width. The shorter dimension as we are used to as in the uh, canine, we take it at the cervical line and the larger dimension will take it in the cusp slope level. The shorter dimension at the cervical line is 2.5 mm while at the level of the cusp slope is 3.5 mm. And then we join all the points to reach the midline at the top of the block. This is the same as for the canine except for the mesial cusp slope is the longer one here. And we redraw the same on the other aspect, 2.5 mm on the cervical line and 3.5 mm on the level of the cusp slope and join all the points together to get the trapezoidal outline. and we draw the root portion coming straight downwards. The same cutting method as in the canine, taking a support, cutting with the knife layer by layer and then remove the excess till you reach your outline. We cut into three planes. The first plane is from the top of the block till reaching the level of the cusp slope either medially or distally and try to make each plane smooth without any excess uh, wax and do not overcut and do not leave any irregularities on your surface and then you redraw again the cusp slope line as it is the reference for the second cutting plane from the cusp slope till the cervical line you are cutting inwards as you are coming from a wider dimension at the cusp slope to a narrower dimension at the cervical line And then again adjust all the planes to be smooth without any irregularities or excess wax. Always having support during cutting and finishing. Never work without your finger support from the other hand and also from the cutting pan. And then the root portion, we go downward straight, removing all the excess wax 
and then we finish the surface and go to the next one. The same will be done for the distal aspect, cutting into three planes. The first one from the midline till the level of the distal cusp slope, removing all the excess wax and smoothening the plane. Then I redraw again the cusp slope level to cut starting from the cusp slope to the cervical line going inward. Take your time in removing the excess wax. Do not hurry as not to overcut. then cutting the road portion straight downwards. We finished here the first step, the width dimension. We redraw again the cervical line and we draw the midline on the proximal aspects, mesial and distal. You can either draw the midline on either side, mesial and distal, and then you join it at the top, or you come over the block as uh, in the video, getting the midline from the mesial to the distal aspect. Now we will draw the maximum convexity. In the premolar, the maximum convexities are not at the same level, we have the maximum convexity at the level of 2.5 mm on the buccal aspect, while the maximum convexity of the lingual aspect is at 4 mm. So this is the buccal aspect with a maximum convexity 2.5 mm above the cervical line. And for the lingual aspect, the maximum convexity level is at 4 mm above the cervical line. So we have two lines of maximum convexities and not only one line as in the interior teeth. And then we take the second dimension which is the thickness, 4 mm at the cervical line, 4.5 mm at the maximum convexities. And on top of the block, the highest point, we take what's called as intercostal distance, as this is a posterior tooth having an occlusal aspect. The intercostal distance in the book it is 2.5. Please let it be 3.5 mm to have a wide occlusal plane or occlusal surface for further carving. And then you join the points coming from the narrow cervical line 4.4 mm to 4.5 at the level of the maximum convexity, and then reaching uh, the 3 mm at the top of the block at the area of the intercostal distance. So we do not join the points to the midline, we join it to two different points away from the midline 3.5 mm. This is called the intercostal distance as it is a posterior tooth having an occlusal surface. The same will be done on the other proximal aspect 4 mm at the cervical line, 4.5 mm at the maximum convexity line, and we join it to the intercostal distance at the top of the block. and the root portion we go straight downwards. Start cutting, we will cut into three planes. The first one from the buccal cusp tip or from the intercostal distance at the top of the block till reaching the maximum convexity level which is 2.5 mm. And smoothen the surface. The way of cutting is the same in the canine or oh, the only difference that we took the intercostal distance in the second step. But you still follow the outline. The second cutting plane is from the maximum convexity till the cervical line, going inwards. 
to have the convexity of the buccal surface which is the cervical ridge and then going downward straight into the root portion now we finish cutting the buccal surface we go for the lingual surface cutting into three planes the first one from the intercostal distance or from the level of the lingual cuspid till reaching the maximum convexity lingually and then you redraw the line of the maximum convexity this is the reference for the second plane of cutting from the maximum convexity to reaching the cervical line going inwards and removing any excess wax and then for the root portion we go straight downwards and redraw again the cervical line all over the block now we will make buckle bridge drawing a line from the and the lingual ridge drawing a line from the buccal cuspid or the lingual cuspid till reaching the maximum convexity level, whatever uh, buccally or lingually. The lingual ridge, we just make it very, very fine. Okay? And for the buccal ridge, we draw a line from the cuspid till the cervical ridge, and then we remove wax flaring around this line in order to be elevated to give the buccal ridge. So the lingual ridge, it should be, um, we should remove a very fine layer of wax a very small quantity of wax okay then we will have the outline what's remaining here that we will make the lingual conversions removing a one millimeter of the wax from the lingual outline till reaching the midline at the proximal aspect like this we remove a nearly one millimeter from the lingual outline till reaching the midline proximally and we finish the buccal surface if there is any step or irregularities after finishing the lingual conversion. This step is very important, the buccal ridges and the lingual conversions to have the buccal and the lingual ridge and the lingual conversions to have the hexagonal outline.